Welcome back to Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from Manosphere Highlights Daily. The Super Chad Dr. Murray calls the defendants pretty much fem cells. <laughs> Please subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. That's good. That child. It's child time. The only thing I did to Olivia Berger was reject her. This is why her story is missing any substantiating circumstance of wrongdoing to her. When I met Berger, I felt her pictures concealed certain attributes and lacked the overall perspective from her total in-person appearance. Let me be clear that this meeting should not be categorized as a date. I do not want to be referred to as someone who went on a date with Berger. In a statement to us, Mar Damn, this chat is ruthless. Doesn't even want to be associated on a date with her because she looks so bad. He says he has never met, much less dated, some of the women posting about him. He went on to accuse the women of catfishing him, saying they posted highly filtered and enhanced photos on their dating profiles, concluding, Perhaps these women are not successful at dating for oh. obvious reasons. <laughs> Welcome to Manosphere Highlights Daily. Yesterday, we gave you an overview of the ongoing lawsuit involving Dr. Lucas Murray and more than 50 individuals. On and of course, this chat's a doctor, right? A doctor in New York. Mm probably making massive amounts of money looks good tall gets to tr treat women any way he wants and he's about to make you guys pay facebook today we <laughs> delve deeper into the latest development a statement issued by murray himself let's explore the details and provide objective analysis as we navigate through this complex legal saga it's interesting to see a different perspective from the statements of the women we highlighted yesterday. Mm. Let's talk about it. We men and we. Yeah. We men and we. Yeah. Yeah. Janice, read with a male voice, please. Will do, sir. Dr. Lucas Murray's statement from 22nd March 2024. Background. After matching with and giving my number to Kelly Gibbons, a.k.a. Kel Kolb Gibb, a.k.a. KCG, I became suspicious of the cagey nature of her heavily filtered images and lost interest. Thing I did to Gibbons was block her. Instead of moving on, she went online and vindictively posted my picture in a Facebook group that she felt was a safe space to call out guys that have been disrespectful. We know it. Women cannot accept rejection. This man rejected them, and guess what they did? They all went on Facebook to trash the man because they all got rejected, pretty much. Because this is the man they want, guys. This is the true man that they want. A doctor, tall, chiseled jawline, treats him like shit. For about a year, she constantly bumped her own post about me to incite more reactions while also creating many posts gossiping about other people. One who was deceased and could not harm anyone. Talking According to Murray's statement, wow. the saga began when he matched with Kelly Gibson on a dating app, only to lose interest due to suspicions about her profile pictures. Remember this? Never in my life have I been stood up and I'm baffled. I'm baffled that a human being would plan something with somebody and just not show up. So I need for a man to explain to me why this happens. I'll wait. This is an answer why a man with options would ghost a woman. Not that I condone it, but it happens. Just like how women ghost, block, and reject men at a much higher rate. Yep. What also happens is that the salty ghosted woman will go to this Facebook group and tell every woman in there that this man is an a-hole with pictures and everything. Hell had no fury like a woman scorned. Scorn. Let's continue. For years at least, if not more than 238 Facebook accounts, mostly anonymous and or fake, commented on Gibbon's post about me. Out of these accounts, I have thus far only named 10, 10 individuals in my lawsuit who have stepped over the line and broken the law. It is likely I will add a few more. These allegations include libel, false light, <clears throat> invasion of privacy, sexual discrimination, etc. Out of the 10 defendants, I briefly met one for less than 15 minutes and do not recall meeting any others. Wow. All of these women didn't even go out on a fucking date with the man? 
they literally were just in the chatting stages of dating apps and whatever it is. And they got that upset that he rejected them. Why? Because I told you guys, he's what they want. All of these women that hit the wall, thinking that they can hit that six-figure man that takes care of everything, that looks like fucking Adonis. I guess this man fits that description. That's why they're so upset. So upset. That's so crazy that they never even went on a date with this man. One of the defendants makes an intriguing point. Check this out. He somehow found those comments that we did make. Oh, somehow um, found. Again, they were factual and they were based in our true experiences. He found those comments. Your true experiences. So 200 and something women commented on there. And your experience was a 15-minute date and none of the other women there even went out on a date with him. What factual shit are you talking about now? ...and um, decided to uh, come forth with this lawsuit with his claims of defamation. He somehow found the comments we made, she says. So the implication here is that Murray may have uncovered comments made by the defendants even if they did not expect him to find them, even if they were truthful. What's particularly noteworthy is the fact that Murray filed the lawsuit and has legal representation. Normally, a lawyer reviews the case on its merits before filing a lawsuit. This raises questions about the legitimacy of Murray's claims and the likelihood of success in court. But yeah, it. it I felt silenced. I felt like I was being intimidated into silence. And that Shut could be a problem, according to defamation attorney Jeff Lewis. In First Amendment world, we call that a chilling effect, meaning when people fear they're going to be sued, they either stop talking or they change what they're going to say because they're worried they're going to be sued. Lewis says anyone can sue another person for what they say about them online, but that doesn't mean they'll win. You know, the best way to avoid being sued for saying things on the internet is to say things that are true or that are opinion. And if you step outside of truth or opinion, there's a good chance you might get sued if it's something negative. Lewis believes this case will make it to court. Because a judge at this early stage can't believe one side or the other, that's a jury question. So this case will likely go to trial if it doesn't settle. I hope it One does. of the defendants, Ellie Sherriott, had the gall to fabricate a totally impractical story that I matched with her on a dating app and appeared at a hotel where she was dining. I have never met this person in my life. I certainly do not recall having any interest in her, and I do not have any record of communication with Ruthless. her. Ruthless. Since then, these defendants have appeared on national TV and created a website alleging that I sued 50 women and committed acts which in truth and actual fact never occurred. So all these 50 women is all what the women been doing? What we covered yesterday with the Manosphere Highlights Daily was their articles and their side of the story only. And he's telling you, these fucking whores are liars. These lies have spread across the nation and I will therefore be adding slander and unjust enrichment to my complaint against defendants. In short, most women don't spend all their time making trashy posts on Facebook. The acts of these defendants are hate-fueled and unrelentless, said Facebook losers rage in their war against people who have no idea they have been targeted. One can name them a female version of incels, femcells. The glue of their group is their hatred of men. He categorizes them as hate-fueled individuals, likening them to femcells driven by their hatred of men. I don't think they are femcells, but we have many, 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 many videos of women showcasing an inflated ego and sense of entitlement. They are not used to being on the receiving end, especially if the rejection comes from a man that they desire. When they flake on you, like, excuse me, what? It's, it's an honor for you to be even be included into my <laughs> roster. And you're gonna flake on me not once, but twice? I honestly have no words. I feel like... That's why TikTok is full of crying and complaining women, even though men have a higher chance of being incels. Worse, there is clearly an even darker side to this conspiracy. Said Facebook groups are known to have caused people to lose their livelihoods. In some instances, innocent people die. These serious crimes against our democratic constitutional republic designed to protect our peace and happiness can be traced back to the nonchalance, misrepresentation, 
and unlawful guidance from Facebook administrators and or moderators. I agree including with Including Paula Sanchez. Please. Because the moderators and everybody sees all this and approves all this. They went around making these websites for all of the areas. Or not these, these Facebook pages for all the areas. And I'm positive they're all pretty mean and disgusting how they talk about the men. But it is still allowed and these books and these pages are actually monetized. That's the issue. So Facebook is actually paying these people that own the page that and allows them to say all these things. So yes, I would agree. Facebook should be liable for this particular one. Please stay tuned for updates by checking my profile. Thank you. Murray blames Facebook administrators and moderators claiming they were neglectful by allowing defamatory content to spread unchecked. Remember this? The mm -hmm. goal, creators say, is to protect women, not judge men. Sure. Maybe some of these women should be protected from themselves. The role of social media platforms in cases like these is a topic of ongoing debate. While platforms have a responsibility to address harmful content, determining the line between free speech and defamation can be complex. As this story unfolds, it's vital to maintain a balanced perspective and withhold judgment until the facts come to light. We'll continue to monitor the situation and provide updates as they develop. Shout out to Manus for Highlights Daily. Yeah, maybe we don't want to jump to conclusions yet. From what we can tell though, it seems pretty legit that he has a case. And I hope this man wins. This man will set precedents for women to be scared to talk shit about men online. I hope this goes through, boys. S support. Please like subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.